Hello again, fellow mystery files. Today I begin my three-part ranking of all 32 Miss Silver novels written by Patricia Wentworth. And before I begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with the channel. I'll start with some general thoughts on the series, and overall, I'm not very high on Miss Silver or Patricia Wentworth as a writer. I had never read these books before I decided to make this video, which was one of the few from the Golden Age I had not previously read, and I wasn't impressed. I won't say I disliked them because I wouldn't have read through all 32 of them if I did, but there was a sameness about them that made reading them in a row really unpleasant. And the general way these novels played out was there's a young heroine, often of the too stupid to live variety, in love with a young man, often equally stupid or a jerk, who cannot marry for some reason, and that obstacle is removed via murder in some way. And Patricia Wentworth's murderers are almost exclusively in two camps of either a roguish young man or the middle-aged bored spinster. Now, there are others, but this is the vast majority of them. And in general, I think a lot of these novels blend together, and so do the characters. I struggled to remember individual characters from these books, so much so that I had to be constantly looking up these books again, even though I had just read them just to get the characters' names straight. And the writing style also leaves a lot to be desired where we have point of view flips mid chapter without breaks or transition often and just so many other things i mean these are very common occurrences in these books and all of that topped off with miss silver making a number of essentially cameo appearances in her books and her inconsistent portrayal i think the series is subpar especially for the golden age now before i begin uh, my usual warning of there may be spoilers ahead but i will try to keep them minor I will go through all of these books as always, and I will start at the bottom with number 32. The worst Miss Silver novel is, quite frankly, one of the worst books I've ever read. This might be the worst mystery novel, certainly from the Golden Era, but perhaps I have ever read, and that is Lonesome Road, the third book in the series. And this book has so many problems that I can't even address them all in this video, the biggest of which is the plot. There is no murder in this book, and it desperately needed one. The heroine here is Rachel Trahern, who is quite frankly one of the dumbest characters in a book I've ever know read. She knows someone is trying to kill her, and has narrowed it down to a list of a bunch of relatives she hates, and yet she refuses to do anything about this for some reason. Like, why did she go to Miss Silver in the first place? Miss Silver tells her to disinherit her family, which she refuses to do, despite the fact that she hates them, and it doesn't just make any sense. I was about halfway through this book where I realized that Rachel wasn't going to be murdered, and I really couldn't make myself care at that point. The attempts on Rachel's life are so lame like putting snakes in her bed and polishing a step too much and there's this really awful twist where we learn like her maid has faked these attempts after she came across the real ones and cleaned them up and it's like why is this in here there's a good character in this cousin that sells sam uh, scam subscriptions but she's barely in it which is a shame and the ending is pretty bad too where the killer like falls into a giant hole that was in his basement for some reason like why is there a bottomless pit in this guy's house. I have nothing positive to say about Lonesome Road except for that minor character, and it is deep, deep in the bottom here at number 32. At number 31 is a novel I also think is pretty bad, but is actually much better than Lonesome Road, and that is She Came Back, also called The Traveler Returns, spelled with two L's for some reason. And I think the premise here is actually pretty intriguing. This is set during World War II, and Anne Jocelyn died in France, and her husband brought her body back to England. Only now, a woman is claiming to be the real Anne Jocelyn, and says that Philip brought the wrong body back, and she is the real Anne. The problem for me is that the beginning of this novel drags on for so long. It's past the halfway point where the action really takes off. The first half of the book is totally irrelevant, where we meet a bunch of characters, who, and we spend a lot of time with them, but then they just vanish without mentioning again, which is really annoying. And the characterization is pretty bad as well. A number of characters voice their opinion on Anne, but they're not consistent. They go back and forth constantly. To the point is very difficult to follow who believes what, and it's not like any of this even matters matters in the end. Even Philip, who is Anne's husband, doesn't seem to know, which is really ridiculous. And the other main issue I have is that the, this woman is murdered, but she's only murdered well after it becomes clear she's an imposter. In general, this is a problem with Miss Silver novels, that there really is 
any like suspense builds up and when on the rare occasions there are it's immediately dissipated and this is probably the best example from this other than the premise she came back has little to speak for it so i put it here towards the bottom at number 31. At number 30, I have a novel that's pretty much the typical Miss Silver experience, especially like in the earlier on books, and that is In the Balance, also titled Danger Point. And this one seems to be a favorite of Patricia Wentworth, as it is referenced a lot in future novels, and so is the heroine of Lyle Jerningham, who is a little smarter than the typical heroine we see in these books, but that doesn't really say much. And I largely found this book pretty lackluster. I mean, the solution is pretty obvious here, where a local girl is pushed off a cliff and she was wearing a coat that belonged to Lyle, and Lyle thinks her husband is going to kill her. It doesn't take much to connect the dots here as to what happened, and there's no suspense or intrigue or like a twist of any kind. The characters are slightly better than what they had been up to this point chronologically, but that's not really enough to boost it up much further. The ending is also pretty ridiculous and overdramatic. I will say, I think In the Balance probably has less lows than the next few novels I'll talk about, but it has almost every problem I have with Miss Silver books, so that does propel it down the list quite a bit to here at number 30. At number 29 is, again, one that follows the same formula as these early books, and that is Dark Threat, also called Pilgrim's Rest. And this one has a male protagonist of sorts, which is somewhat unusual for the series. My main issue here, besides the basic routine and formula, is that their murder attempts are so convoluted, not quite as bad as Lonesome Road, but pretty bad. And they include leaving the tap water running so a bedroom ceiling collapses in. And we have several of these until the patriarch of the family is eventually murdered, which is an improvement from Lonesome Road. And it takes a long time for the action to begin here, and much of it is pretty bland, very routine, and at times just unbelievable. I will say I think this one has better characters than any of the ones I've already talked about. And the reason why I have this one as high as it is, because I do feel as if the solution was better hidden. It wasn't until much later on in Dark Threat where the culprit becomes obvious. Usually in Miss Silver novels, the culprit is pretty much foretold from the start, so I felt that was a very small something to put it above those other books here at number 29. At number 28 is a book that I feel could be higher. I didn't nearly put it up a few slots higher. It's not the worst story in the world, but I have a lot of issues with it, and that is The Case is Closed, the second book in the series. As you may have noticed, three of these bottom five books are very early novels for Patricia Wentworth. The mystery here is decent, but there are some issues largely with the construction of it. Our heroine is Hilary Carew, whose cousin Marion is largely a ghost of herself since her husband Jeff was convicted of murdering his uncle. This isn't so much of a who done it as it is a will they be caught because it is apparent the culprit is the husband's cousin and I find these kinds of stories interesting but difficult to pull off. This isn't really a, an inverted mystery as I suppose we're not really told who the killer is but I mean, there's really no one else it could be. Hillary has an ex-fiance Henry whom she is not compatible with. I found it difficult to care about them as well and they're both fine people but clearly ill-suited for each other so the romance was very odd to me but the story really falls apart in its construction where Hillary and Henry are so easily able to prove Jeff's innocence with just a few simple questions to a witness who isn't even hesitant or resistant in any way so one does wonder why the police couldn't figure this out but the biggest knock for me is with the characters of the Mercers who are these housekeeping servants who were very clearly bribed to keep their mouth shut and Mrs. Mercer has since had a complete breakdown over this as she feels guilty about convicting Jeff, but she somehow, incredibly, is able to write a several pages long confession as her husband is not only watching her to make sure she doesn't do this, but is also basically murdering her at the same time, and he does not notice she's writing this confession. This confession is very long. It's just utterly ridiculous, and on top of that, Miss Silver is barely even in this one. I do think the case is closed, possessed is a strong mystery at its very, very deep core, but it is very flawed in execution, so it comes in at number 28. At number 27 is really the first novel on this list from quite a bit later on in the series, 
and that is Lady's Bane. And again, this one has several common issues with the story, namely a very contrived murder method of tricking a young girl into swinging on a frayed rope, and basically it has the same storyline as many other books. Rich wife, greedy husband who tries to kill her but fails, it's nothing special. I have very little to say about this one. We have another ignorant heroine who keeps escaping death through no doing of her own. Miss Silver is not really in this one enough either, and there are chapters where just absolutely nothing of interest happens. The reason why Lady's Bane is this high is because I think the brief setup of no one having heard from Allegra Trent was at least something of interest. It doesn't turn out that way, but it was initially there. And other than that, I have very little to comment on on this one. So Lady's Bane comes in here at number 27. At number 26, and this is the last Miss Silver novel on my ranking that I would consider to be atrociously bad, and that is The Ivory Dagger. Again, very similar thing here. Rich young woman with no free will or backbone whose aunt is desperate to marry her off to some dreadful jerk. The jerk gets murdered at a house party, and in many ways I found The Ivory Dagger to be simply dreadful and quite a step backwards. The books, in my opinion, had been steadily improving until this point in the series, and the Ivory Dagger seemed to be a return to the dumb heroine and with an increased focus on the sappy romance I didn't care about. The narrative in this one is so boring, where the heroine Lila is just one of the most dull characters in the series, and we're supposed to care about her, but we just don't. And we spend so much time with her as she just mopes about her day, and all of this was just so boring and irrelevant to the murder itself. The only reason why I have this one at the top of the atrocious tier is because the murderer, again, wasn't actually that obvious, which is a rarity for these books, but it was enough to place this one here at number 26. These next three titles are basically transition books on my list here between the atrocious and lackluster tier. They are all late series books that I did not enjoy, but I think at least partially this was because I read all 32 of these books in a row and I was just simply burnt out on the series reading all of these very similar novels in a streak. And that by virtue of these books being towards the end, I probably wound up with a lower opinion of them than I would have otherwise. But at number 25, the worst of these is The Summer House, also called The Gazebo. It's a running pattern here where we have the same story, only this is slightly different. Rich heroine, well, she's not even that rich, but she does control the money and owns the house, whose mother is trying to control her, and the mother is eventually murdered. There is some intrigue over the house because several people want to buy this house for an exorbitant price, and it's pretty obvious there's some kind of like treasure in the gazebo. The problem for me is that a lot of this intrigue is dampened by the fact that the reader knows more than Miss Silver and Frank Abbott do, so all of the intrigue over why these people want to purchase the house is simply non-existent, and also the investigation Miss Silver and Frank Abbott conduct is just really repetitive because we know basically all of the information they discover. I did also feel there was a lot of nothing going on for large portions of this book, so I put The Summer House here at number 25. Number 24 is a novel that I thought had potential but fell short, and that is The Fingerprint. I found the concept here to be interesting. Our victim is Jonathan Field, who has an obsession with collecting fingerprints from everyone who visits, and when he is murdered, a page of his collection is removed from its book. And this could have been a good plot, but it has two issues. One is that, once again, the intrigue is immediately done away with once it has been set up. Miss Silver just randomly states she thinks this is a red herring with very little evidence to back this up. And so it's never really discussed again further. And the other issue is that even though this was a red herring, it's not used properly as one. Patricia Wentworth should have led us down that path for much longer. It was a good plot point, but one that is just simply not executed well. However, my main issue with this one is that, once again, we have a very obvious killer. And to be fair, this character doesn't show up until about the halfway point. But once he does, there's really no doubt he is the culprit. Overall, I think The Fingerprint has the best plot of any Miss Silver novel I've talked about thus far. But its execution fell way flat, so it comes in here at number 24. At number 23 is a similar sort of novel, and that is The Allington Inheritance. And this one is an inverted mystery, which means that the murderer is revealed to us from the start, or in this case, about the halfway point when the murder actually happens. This is an improvement. I don't mind inverted mysteries, I find them intriguing, and I do mind though when the murderer isn't stated but it's obvious and the author is just dragging us along a non-existent mystery. 
I think there are chunks of this novel that are very good and demonstrate good writing skills from Patricia Wentworth, which if I'm being honest, I didn't see much of many of that in her books. I think the idea of a young woman finding out that she is the legitimate heiress to a fortune she thought was someone else's is clever and something that does happen in a few Miss Silver novels, but this one works out well. I think Patricia Wentworth wrote Miriam's murder scene brilliantly, where the reader is actually witnessing Mac murder Miriam. And remember, this is not a spoiler. This is an inverted mystery. We are told this. And rarely do Golden Age mystery writers depict a murder scene on the page. However, the Allington inheritance does have a number of flaws that keep me from placing it higher. First off, the other parts of this novel drag considerably. Secondly, the main heroine in Jenny, the heiress, is not well depicted. She performs a number of actions that just don't make sense. I understand why she ran away from the Forbes, the people who do have the inheritance, but in that absence, she doesn't do anything to get the money back. She just runs away with Richard and then hides for a while when she is in the power position and she knows it and she can prove it. She can prove she is the rightful heiress and just doesn't it doesn't make any sense i also felt miss silver was a bit lacking here but overall i think the allington inheritance has more highs than any novel i've talked about already so it comes in here at number 23 and at number 22, the final novel I will talk about in this video begins the tier of novels that I would say are mediocre, but not awful. And the first of these is Through the Wall. And this one features more inheritance shenanigans where Marion Brand inherits an estate out of the blue of some rich relative who died, and she's forced to deal with a bunch of disinherited family members and her own invalid sister and her jerk husband, Cyril. And Through the Wall is pretty much a run-of-the-mill novel for Patricia Wentworth. It really doesn't do anything special or stand out in any way, but it also doesn't really have those flaws for me to discuss. It's just a pretty basic novel. We do actually see Miss Silver's much-talked-about niece Ethel and her daughter Josephine, which was nice. We normally are treated to just anecdotes of their lives via letters, and they don't actually feature much in the plot, but... They were really tangential here as well, but it was nice to see them anyway. And we have a run-of-the-mill murderer again, one that Patricia Wentworth uses time and time again. I think one can make the argument that this one should be below the last three novels I spoke about, but the reason why I didn't put it that low is because I don't think Through the Wall does anything wrong. I don't have issues with the plot construction. It's just a flat novel, but one that did keep my attention the entire time, so I placed it here at number 22. And that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some of my past videos if you are just discovering Summation Gathering. Next week, my ranking of every Miss Silver novel continues with the middle third of the series, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, Mystery Files.